John Grogan. He does all of the lie detector stuff for like every YouTuber. How can there only be one guy that does lie detector stuff? We need to know more about this. I've looked into this more than I've been leading on. I've definitely like researched this. Uh, you gotta make this video now. Yeah, I think I really? will. It's a good topic. This is deep. It goes deep. Strugglers, I have been fascinated by this guy, John Grogan, for years now. He's known across the internet and TV as the lie detector guy. I've seen him pop up in so many different places. He's just always been this mysterious figure lurking in the shadows of media and my mind. But who is he? What does he really do? And is there more going on than meets the eye? Anthony Padilla type intro? <laughs> now I gotta warn you, this story takes some unexpected turns. When I first started looking into John over three years ago, I had no idea how deep the lore was gonna run. But I hope you'll take this journey with me as we unravel the mystery of the lie detector guy. <laughs> Have you ever been watching a movie or a TV show and randomly noticed this guy just hanging out in the background? This is Jesse Heyman, and he's credited as being in well over a hundred different projects, usually relegated as an extra just filling space in the background of a scene, but sometimes getting more of a focal role. Still have nightmares from this one in particular. He's been in such a variety of different things that it's almost impossible for you to have not seen his face at least once at this point. Apparently there's even a documentary about him called Jesse Heyman, World's Greatest Extra, starring himself and James Franco? <laughs> what? I don't think this ever got released because I cannot find any clips of it anywhere. All that exists is this abandoned Kickstarter page from almost a decade ago. <laughs> but anyway, the whole reason I bring this up is because I think there's a new sheriff in town, Jesse. While many people may recognize Mr. Heyman for his appearances across pop culture, for me, it's all about John Grogan. Have you ever watched a YouTube video? And don't lie, because I already know the answer. Well, there's a reasonable chance that you may have seen Mr. Grogan appear at least once. A lot of the biggest channels on the platform have utilized his services for content over the years. Logan Paul, Dixie D'Amelio, The Try Guys. These aged hilariously, by the way. Have you ever pictured anyone at the office naked? Do you think you're better than other people because you have a great marriage? I don't have a problem telling the truth even if it hurts. And so many others. If there's a trend to hop on, People are gonna hop on it. I don't know where I was going with that. I thought I had an expression. <laughs> and even before every single channel on YouTube started making lie detector videos, John was the go-to guy for television. From Survivor, through many legal shows, Nancy Grace, Swift Justice, Divorce Court, For the Love of Ray J, Tool Academy, Flavor of Love, and just on and on. If there was a need for a polygraph examiner in the Los Angeles area, John was the guy. I don't watch online pornography. Okay. According to his website, he's done over 12,000 exams since the 1980s. Uh, this website looks like it hasn't been updated since the 1980s. <laughs> I'm John, the lie detector guy. I've been testing since the 1980s. I've tested over 8,000 people. If I see one of them lying, I will let you know. God hates liars, and I hate liars. All right, calm down, John. He started in the 1980s and this video was from 2017. So if he had done 8,000 tests up until that point, he's done over 4,000 since then in the last six years. YouTube exploded this man's career. And that's clear when, and I cannot stress this enough, John has been in a ridiculous amount of YouTube videos. I've shot this video three times before, right? We've done this before. I've been seen on almost 700 million views of social media. I pretty much can't go in a Walmart or a Target without people coming up and saying, I saw you on this show. I think depending on your friend group, you could go as John Grogan for Halloween and they might actually get it. He's also become known for his iconic thumbs. How many people can say that? Vault Boy, maybe, but that's about it. Here's how the videos tend to go. The YouTuber sits down and explains how nervous they are to take the polygraph as if they can't just cut out anything they don't want people to see. John sits there with the absolute grumpiest energy imaginable. And then the YouTuber's friends ask them the exact same questions every single time. Do you think you're the best looking person in our friend group? Do you think you're the smartest out of all of us? Have you ever had a sex dream about anybody in this room? Has anyone here ever had an original thought? And all throughout this, John is just stone cold. Man doesn't flinch. He's a professional, okay? It doesn't matter how hairy it gets, John doesn't give the camera anything to work with. <laughs> I've seen him in so many videos where he just shows no experience. So John is there to determine if these people are lying. Or is he? 
A lot of the time I can't really tell if John is a serious polygraph examiner or just a dang comedian. There's no way any of these guys can trick me and I live by the motto, liars go to hell. I love you. It's I true. love her too. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in myself. Now you know how your parents felt. Have you ever let somebody poop on you in a sexual way? <laughs> no. It's a goddamn lie. I'll kill you right here. <laughs> Margot Robbie needs my knobby. It looked like someone just stuffed fish in a suitcase. I hear they taste like penis. I'll stab you in the eye. <laughs> the man is low-key funny as hell. That dry, deadpan humor is so good and so confusing. <laughs> it's not a problem for him to be funny. That's not what I'm saying. It's kind of like John is the one that's getting most of the laughs and not the actual YouTubers. John is subtly doing a lot of the heavy lifting to actually add humor to the videos. He does think she's the best looking and she will leave for more money. Oh. Do you do crack? Of course. True. What? <laughs> Like there's absolutely no way he was able to read the machine that quickly and determine if Michael was telling the truth, right? He just knew that it'd be funnier to say that's true, right? Do you think I'm pathetic because I'm 47 and I'm filming with you guys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> John didn't even have to look at the screen for that one. That's just his honest opinion. <laughs> so it looks like at least sometimes John may not be the neutral party that he's set up to be. Now, is that a problem? It could be. Yeah. Plastered all over John's website is language about how the polygraph is the way to get to the truth. It's a nearly foolproof method to see if somebody is lying. It is a lie detector after all. So of course it can detect lies. Or can it? Okay, we can't. We can't keep doing that every time. To understand this better, I think we need to take a closer look at what a lie detector really is. I suppose I should let you hear John's explanation for what a lie detector machine does and how he uses it. Polygraph examiner determines if somebody's telling the truth or not based on their microscopic changes to blood, sweat, and breathing as they answer a series of yes or no questions. Questions of importance are surrounded with questions we know you're telling the truth so the computer can see what your body does on things we know for sure you're telling the truth. So each line has a different read to a part of a body? Yes, yeah, some people's lies show up in their sweat some in their breathing, some in their blood. When you lie, your body knows you're doing something bad and we see it, not only did your breathing go up, but the sweat at your fingers went up. So the machine is measuring people's bodies, specifically their blood pressure, sweat levels, and breathing. The theory is that when people are lying, those bodily functions behave irregularly. So maybe your heart starts beating faster, maybe your palms get a little sweaty, maybe your knees get weak, arms heavy. There's also some basic behavior that's expected of the person taking the test, and I'll let John explain that. To do your best on a polygraph, you need to answer yes or no with just your mouth, not your head. Yes or no with your mouth only, not extra loud or strong or extra soft on any. You need to sit still like a statue. You really gotta sit like a statue if you can. And answer with his mouth only, no nodding. Even the tapping of your foot and hand can give you enough bad boy points to fail the test. Everybody gonna have to take it seriously or else it's just gonna keep coming up as Bye. And there's also some more information written on his website, including what the results should look like, how you get hooked up, and many images stating that you should never test in your own home. Unless you're a YouTuber, of course, then like everything else in life, the rules do not apply to you. And I know I briefly mentioned it earlier, but I cannot move forward without showing you just how unhinged this website actually is. I'm just gonna throw up a scroll through of the entire thing top to bottom. Feel free to pause at any time and just soak it in. It's just one massive page with hundreds of deep fried images and memes pasted everywhere. Nobody's gonna read all this, John. Except for me, I read all of it. Uh, I am out of my mind though. The problem with all of this though, is that regardless of how prepared you are going in, regardless of how experienced your examiner is, regardless of where you take the test, this machine cannot determine whether or not somebody is lying. <laughs> All it can do is measure very specific changes in your body. And even that is not guaranteed to be accurate. And I know this from personal experience. So there I was, 
just a wee lad, about to start my new job doing videography for the city of Fargo. But since my job would entail spending some time at the police department, I needed to take a polygraph in order to gain clearance to work there. So I'm sent this long questionnaire like a week before the polygraph, probably 40 to 50 questions. Have you ever stolen from work? Do you have a history of violence? Where were you on October 16th? Standard stuff. And one of the questions reads, do you take any illegal drugs? And I answered no, because that's the truth and I'm an honest boy. Fast forward to the actual date of the polygraph exam, right? I'm in this tiny little room with the examiner and she tells me we have to go over all the questions again verbally and just verify that what I said on the paper is what I believe to be true. So we go through them, piece of cake, no big deal. Yes, that is what I said. Yes, those are the truth. I'm an honest boy. So now I'm hooked up to the machine, okay? I'm strapped in. And she's reading through the questions again, I'm answering yes, I'm answering no. And then she gets to the illegal drugs question and she says to me, she says, have you ever taken any illegal drugs? And I'm like, hold on a second. That's not the way that that question was worded on the questionnaire that I filled out, ma'am. On the questionnaire, it said, do you take any illegal drugs? Implying, is this something that I'm doing now? Not, have I ever in my life taken any illegal drugs? So immediately I'm transported back to my freshman year of college when my reckless friends talked me into smoking a weed. I toked the devil's lettuce. How dare they convince me to break the law like that, those criminals. So anyway, all of a sudden I'm at a crossroads, right? Like, do I answer the question honestly or do I answer the way that I answered on the questionnaire as to not raise any suspicion? And I was like, well, I guess I don't wanna cause any problems. I'll just say what I said on the questionnaire, even though it's not technically true. Well, needless to say, my body was like, warning, warning, you are alive. I'm freaking out, I'm breaking into a sweat. My heart is pounding, my ears go to hell. Right, but was I lying? Not really, I mean, at most, I was confused. I was just playing along, I was trying to do the right thing, and I did what I thought was the right thing, and all I got out of that was a failing test result. I failed the polygraph. It all worked out eventually. I went to the supervisor's office and explained what happened, and I still ended up getting the job. But those stakes were fairly low. What if something much more intense was on the line. Ma'am, I put people in jail with polygraph. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I've heard so many people say, lie detectors aren't admissible in court, and you're so smart for that. I bet tons of people have already commented that on this very video before getting to this part. Go ahead, expose them. And that is true in most places, but there are certain jurisdictions in the United States of America that still allow a polygraph to be used. If you happen to live in one of those jurisdictions, don't agree to that. <laughs> so many things could go wrong and you could end up getting screwed because some godforsaken machine can't understand a nuance. It's a lie. <laughs> what? If, according to, I mean, if you want to believe computer, but I mean, you got the source. But it's also like so easy to beat a lie detector. That's why they can't use them in court. Criminals do it all the time. Adam Conover said it, so it's gotta be true. You literally just put a thumbtack in your shoe and then you blah, 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 blah. I saw Ocean's 13 too, guys. Yeah, beating a lie detector can be done and it has been done. Uh, not as easy as you think it is. <laughs> Until you're actually there sitting in the chair strapped strapped in. It's hard to understand just how reactive your body is to stuff like this. It would take a lot of practice to get your body to go against its natural responses to certain stimuli. But yes, I suppose somebody could trick a lie detector. You're, you're not wrong. You could probably do it because you're so sick, dude. But all that aside, none of that matters because as I said before, the machine can't detect if you're lying. The machine is reading your body. The examiner, the human being that's looking at the screen they're trying to guess if you might be lying. And that's as good as it gets. If you're in a situation where you're asked to take a lie detector and there's consequences and you think you can just trick the machine, don't do it. You might be in for a rude awakening. I'm not a lawyer, but I just, I would, you know, I, I personally, me personally, <laughs> I would advise not to do it. And like crimes, why don't they literally just talk everyone off to a polygraph test? Like, did you do this? Yes or no? James just solved crime. <laughs> 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 Crickets from John. Answer the question, John. When he's reading the results in real time, he's doing it with superhuman speed. Do you like my hair like this? I do. True. Cute. There's just no way that any of this is correct. There's no way the readings are right. All these videos give off such weird vibes. I read vibes now, by the way. <laughs> I'm a TikTok teen. Which brings me to something that is a little bit less fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is where things get a tad dicey. On more than one occasion, John has been accused of faking his polygraph results. I know, guys, I know, okay, I know. I saw this clip of Trisha Paytas talking about working with John in the past. Can I just say one more thing about the lie detector guy? I've been hooked up to him, like check out me on his videos. Like I've been hooked up to him and he literally will say like, oh, I can give you whatever answer you want. Dude, I knew that yeah. guy was such a scammer. Obviously, he's in like everyone's videos. But he straight videos. up just says you can say whatever you want? <laughs> yeah, no, he says, oh, tell me what you want me to say. What? Yeah, oh, That's for sure. That's so lame. Oh, when I got hooked up to it, he literally was like, oh, what do you, like, they're like, no, 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 say yes to that, say no to that. Like, I'm like, okay. Now, Trisha has said some wild stuff over the years. So at first, I wasn't exactly sure how to feel about these comments. Like my main man, John, the thumb guy, isn't the number one authority on truth? How dare you? How dare you say these things? But then I saw this video from James Corden's show, Late Late Lie Detector with Chris and Kylie Jenner. In the segment, James asks Chris Jenner, who's hooked up to John's polygraph, whether or not she was behind the release of Kim and Ray J's sex tape, a rumor that has been floating around since uh, Ray J started it. <laughs> and here's what happened in the interview. Did you help Kim release her sex tape? It's okay, no. True. Of course it's true! Thank you! Of hmm. course it's true! Okay. Oh, I Here like we go. that. We cleared that up. Right, but did we though? Because Trisha said that John will just respond however you want him to. Allegedly. So this could all just be some PR stunt by the Kardashians to cover up some dirt. I know, guys, I know. I didn't believe it either. And that's exactly what Ray J said. <laughs> Ray J accused John of being a quote, fraud, and that it was all totally faked. Really went off on his Instagram after that clip came out. And of course, Ray J is gonna say those things. This show makes him seem like the bad guy. But these statements might actually have some merit to them. I know. Ray J, right? John was featured on a reality show with Ray J in the 2000s called For the Love of Ray J. So they've worked together and there's no way that shit was real. <laughs> so maybe Mr. J does have some more insight than the rest of us do. I don't know. But I have also been holding on to some information for a few years now, ever since I first took an interest with John. And this is a little bit more serious. So I want to be abundantly clear here. I am only reiterating the claims that other people have made. These are by no means my accusations. I am merely showing what other people have said. I'm not a lawyer. I stumbled across these blog posts from 2007 and 2008, where multiple people accused John of a lot of unsavory things. And you know, they kind of got receipts. <laughs> oh, look at the receipt. They said that John ran a polygraph training course filled with inaccurate information. They said that he intimidated and harassed them when they tried advertising their own services in his territory. They said that he's not even technically certified to be a polygraph examiner. He allegedly told them to never charge less than the industry standard of $395, which is odd because on his current website, he boasts a lot about being way cheaper than that and undercutting other examiners. He allegedly encouraged at-home testing regardless of how dangerous it can be, which directly contradicts what's posted on his current website, and the website directly contradicts nearly every YouTube video he's ever been in. They point out how incorrectly John goes about administering tests, allowing people to just move around freely and talk as much as they want. And he allegedly created a digital empire of sorts, buying up dozens of website domains that all redirect customers to his business, essentially making it near impossible for other polygraph examiners to get business in the area through SEO. Despite the inaccuracy of John's dated machine, we had to go with them since there weren't any other operators in the area. And I could go on, but holy crap, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. And this leads me to the most confusing discovery of all on John's own website. It says a note about TV and entertainment polygraph exams. Some are real, some are not. Plus many have scripted, predetermined entertainment or known solution results. I'm sorry, what? So a never ending webpage talking about how your tests are the best there are. Absolute Chad levels of confidence that nobody can beat your machine. There is absolutely no way you were telling the truth on the two questions you failed. Real world consequences on the line. And Trisha Paytas was right all along. Unreal. This eliminates any and all credibility, right? How could it not? Cause there's never an indication of when something is real and when it's fake. Are we just supposed to figure that out on our own? Like, yeah, maybe some of them are a little bit clear. This fake Logan Paul thing, probably not a real result. But did they fabricate the results on Dr. Phil? 
because those were pretty serious. Were they just making things up on claim to fame or when the Dolan twins came in? I don't know why they would, but it's not like it's off the table. It's on the website. We can fake stuff. The court of public opinion is so real and whether or not John is doing it on purpose, he plays a massive role in shaping that. Also, John, he straight up says that people are lying all the time. That's a lie. <laughs> what? Liar. He's lying. I knew it. That's so. a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> it's not even like standard for polygraph examiners. They're supposed to say, oh, there is, there's possibly deception taking place. That's about as far as you can go. You can't say somebody's lying. How accurate is this thing? It's reading his body responses 100% accurately. Bruh. <laughs> Look at how expertly he danced around that question. It's reading his body 100% accurately. I, I love that, dude. Bravo. Oh, you baked grandma's famous cupcakes. Are they as tasty as when she makes them? I put the ingredients in a bowl 100% accurately. But what do they taste like? They taste like shit. Also, the reading your body 100%, that's not even true because the polygraph doesn't read your body 100% accurately in the first place. And also the guy is like moving around and talking during the test. So. That's not even true. That is a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> I would have to imagine a main reason that a lot of people are hiring this guy to do their polygraph exams for their YouTube videos is because they think he's doing it right, at, at the very least. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers will do anything for the sake of content and entertainment, whatever. But if they knew, if they absolutely knew that none of this has, there's nothing trustworthy about the results at all, would they still pay for it? I'm not saying that you can't or shouldn't pay John to do your polygraph exam for funsies or even for seriousies, whatever. Me personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it done. I'm just saying that it would probably be better if he chose one of those things and just stuck to it. Be the silly, casual, no rules, internet actor, essentially, or be a professional. What's like something that I can compare it to? It's so hard, this is so weird. Maybe like an animal wrangler, if there was somebody that was doing a lot of tricks and they were dealing with animals, really dangerous animals, but then they were also just like faking it half the time and they didn't tell you which was which. I wouldn't care about that person then. Cause it's like, well, if I don't know what's real and what's fake, why, why even bother? Why pay attention? Except hopefully animal wranglers aren't putting people in jail. So I see him in a lot of videos. Um, if I see him in more going forward after looking into all this, I might feel a certain type of way about it. But then again, if I never see another lie detector video for the rest of my life, um, I'll be overjoyed because I've watched hours of them for this and I'm just so sick of it. It's like a boring Q&A with extra steps. I just, it's not my cup of tea. Anyway, I think that's all I got for you. Thanks for coming along this journey with me. I don't know where we go from here. I don't think we, I don't think we do go anywhere from here. I think that's kind of it. If you're still here, I'd appreciate just, you know, check out another video. There's other good ones on the channel. Check out another one. The next video that I post will be accompanied by some new merch. New merch, baby. There's gonna be a lot of new items actually. So I'm very excited about that. Springtime is coming. The sun is shining. I'm feeling good. Get some vitamin D. Ooh, extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier. You guys, I would never lie to any of you. I wouldn't do it. I simply would. Me personally, <laughs> I wouldn't lie to any of you. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching once again. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye. You need to reboot the computer or something? There's no, no, nothing to reboot. It's rolling. The computer is a Dell, so I don't know. Computer's a Toshiba. Is that a Windows 95? No. Jesus, dude, you're grasping at straws. You're failing, and I think it's because you're lying. But it's weird for me a little bit when I'm telling the truth and the computer is saying I'm lying, and on top of that, it's a Toshiba.